Hi everyone, Rachel here from RatesTheStamper.com and today I wanted to share with you a few cool things that you can do with the new Stamparatus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making an Easter card and this is a, I will say fairly simple Easter card, however I haven't made it yet so I'm not quite sure that I'm not fibbing. But what we're going to do is we're going to be using the cross from the Hold One to Hope. We're going to be using the, um, I call them palms, I know they're not palms, they're probably sprigs, but we're going to be using the palm sprigs from the Christmas Pines stamp sets. I'm going to pull both of those out. And then what I think I'm going to add at the end is from the hand lettered alphabet, I think I'm going to um, do Happy Easter or something along that uh, lines. I'm not 100% sure, maybe Blessed Easter, we'll see. But we're going to pull these out once we get a little bit farther down into our project. Um, again, if you're not familiar with the Stamparatus, this is something that Stampin' Up! will be releasing in the next annual catalog. They did do two pre-orders, one at the beginning of this year and one in November. Um, I was very, very blessed enough to get into the first pre-order, which was in November, so I got mine the other day. And it comes with two platforms, and these are hinged platforms, so they can go in either one. They're not specific to either side. But in order to be able to um, take them out or move them, you have to have them straight up. So once they go flat, they are kind of locked into place. And then you also have um, a mat here. This you will use for your photopolymer stamps. And then the base, the regular base, you can actually use for your um, clear mount foam stamps or your clear mount red rubber stamps, excuse me. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with the cross. And I'm going to put this up here in the upper corner. And it does have two magnets that are very, very strong. So you want to be super careful with these. You don't want to bring them together because they can pinch your fingers, number one. As you can see, I'm very inky today. Or they can break in half. And they are not, um, they're not warranted. So you would have to purchase a new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our cross down where we want. And I'm going to kind of put this here for now. I'm not 100% sure where I want it yet. And actually for right now, I'm going to actually pull this one out and set it on the side because on second thought, I think I'm going to stamp these palms first. Okay. So they're going to be palms for me again. I know they might not really be palms. They're sprigs, but anyway, we're going to stamp these first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the side, move my magnets. And as you can see, they are a little bit difficult. I do need to go downstairs and get myself some, um, blue painter's tape because it'll make it a little easier to pick them up. I'm going to put my foam insert in and again I'm going to stick this in the corner here. I'm going to stick one here and one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line, I think I'm just going to use the fatter palm. So I'm not going to use the outline. I'm just going to use the solid image and I'll put this one here. So this will kind of be like Easter palm and I'm going to close my door here to pick this image up. And again, I just want to make sure this is nice and straight. Now, one thing you can do, and I wanted to mention this earlier, so I'm kind of glad that I didn't go through with what I was going to do, is one thing you may want to do, and this kind of depends on your personal preference, but you may want to get a piece of um, scrap paper because this is different than, for example, a Misty. Because when you have the Misty, you're stamping against the wall. And Stampin' Up! designed this so it would be open-ended. That way you could stamp whatever you like. However, sometimes you can kind of lose place of where you are with your card. So what I would suggest you to do is you're going to put your card where you want it. And then what you could do is you can grab a, um, like a mechanical pencil or whatever it may be and just kind of draw a line. Okay, that way you know where the corner of your card is going to go. So that way you can put it all the way, put it back there right where it was in the beginning and you don't have to worry about whether or not something was or wasn't lined up in the same spot. So that's what I found the best to be able to do. So again, I'm just going to reattach my, um, my bloop, magnets. Losing my train of thought here. I'm going to reattach my magnets, make sure this is where I want it. And I'm going to ink this up with some old olive ink. Because I think that will make a very nice soft image. So old olive and I'm going to stamp this on here and then what I'm going to do is with I'm going to um, just ink it again just a little bit lighter and I'm going to pick this up straight up and I'm going to move it down two notches just so I can get a second actually I'm going to move it up one notch so I can get a second branch in here. I'm going to slide this down just a little and I'm just going to bring that into the side and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here so it doesn't get snapping. Let's see what this would look like. I'm actually going to bring this over here. So I'm flipping it to the top. So basically what I did is you just pull it out straight up and then you can put it right in here. I'm going to see what it looks like here. I'm going to add one down here at the bottom. Again, I'm going to make sure that this is lined up, that it's in my square. Just put my one magnet there. I'm going to put my old olive ink on again and one here. I think that's pretty good because I don't want to, I don't want to make it too big or too much. 
So then I'm going to take my old olive. I'm going to put that on the side. And while I'm at it, I'm going to just do one in a lemon lime twist. So I'm actually going to pick this back up and I'm going to move it over here to the third spot where I said I had it before. So I'm going to move my magnet so it's off to the other side and I'm going to just grab a um, a baby wipe. So I just have some baby wipes because my baby's not a baby anymore. And I'm just going to clean off this stamp over here. And then I also have a uh, tea towel and I just kind of dry it off. That way the ink sticks to it. I don't have to worry about it falling off. And I'm going to just lightly ink it up with the lemon lime twist and put this in. And you could change position if you wanted to. So, you know, at this point, if you don't really uh, want to put another one in that same spot, what you could do is you could bring your plate up to the top here and kind of put one over here. And then pick it up just like so. Do you want to make sure that you're nice and lined up again? And then just add just a little bit of ink, lemon lime twist, and put that on the top. So it kind of just gives you a little bit of a, a depth. As like I said, I'm I'm going for this being an Easter palm, and I actually saw this from the moment I saw this when it was in the catalog last year when it very first came out, and I kind of thought it reminded me of a palm. So now what I'm going to do. And I just unmounted that. I didn't realize it. I got so used to having to take things on and off of um, clear bases that I didn't realize I didn't need to take that off of there. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slip out my um, foam mat because we're going to use this stamp so we don't need that any longer. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to slide this in. Put this back in the corner where it was. And... I'm going to add this now. Now, I think just because of, you know, traditionally in the Catholic faith, they usually celebrate with um, kind of with purple. So I'm going to do this in a really light brown. I'm going to do it in a soft suede, the cross, and then we will add our words in either perfect plum or I'm not sure yet if we want to do elegant eggplant. We're going to see. So I'm going to stamp my cross. Okay, and if it's not dark enough, so if you want it to be filled in, you could just re-ink it. Now this stamp, if you can see, doesn't really fully fill in because it does have some holes in it. So it is going to just make it a little bit darker, but it's never going to make it solid. If you want to make it solid, and if that is something you want to do, what you could do is you could grab your um, soft suede marker, and then you could kind of just fill it in. But I'm going to leave it just as it is. All right, so then I'm going to put away the soft suede. And this really wasn't cut to um, fit. I'm not quite sure. I think this was just a scrap piece of cardstock that I had here. So I'm going to have to check it out and see what color it is. But then what I'm going to do, so I cleaned off my cross here. Then what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to bring, take my markers, or my markers, I keep calling these markers, take my magnets off. And I'm going to add this foam pad back in because now we're going to start working again with some photopolymer stamps. So I'm going to just make sure this is lined up. So I'm just going to slide my magnets, a.k.a. my markers, <laughs> and I'm going to just add in the letters, okay? So what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to do, there's E. E, and I know this is lowercase, but that's okay. E, A, S, where's my T? Here's the R. I'm blind. Can't even find the T here. Maybe I should put my glasses on. Uh, here it is. The T. It's kind of looking like a U. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up kind of how I wanted. So I'm going to go E. Now I know I'm going to need to bring the E back in. So right now I'm going to just do East. E. And I'm going to have to move this over some so I have it fit. E, A, and you could do these individually if you wanted to. Yeah, that's still not going to fit. Let me bring this over just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start with the R. So the R, T, E. Oh. <laughs> yes. 
These photopolymer stamps are funny because sometimes you can't get them to stick to things and then sometimes you can't get them to let go. Okay, so you could do it like this where you just pick them all up at the same time and then we're just going to add the extra E in there. Now, if you want them to be a little bit more like they're actually in a script that matches in a line, you could certainly do them individually. And we're just going to do perfect plum. So I'm just going to open this up and just ink up these images. All right, and just close it. So at this point, if you wanted to, you could use a big E, but I'm going to just bring this E around. We're going to swap that out. So I'm just going to put E right here in the beginning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these on here just in case I decided I wanted to do another one. That way it's kind of all lined up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flip this to the other side. So that, that is where I want my E. And I'm just going to pick up the E with the other side. As you see, it did leave a little shadow there. It's no big deal though because that's where we want it. I'm just going to ink it and stamp it. So there you have Easter. And then if you wanted to, so if you wanted to put something else at the top, so say at the top we're going to do Blessed. We'll do that one instead. All right, so then we're going to grab, let's see if I can do this without making it take too long. They are in order. I should have realized that. That would have been a smarter idea, idea for me, Rachel. So B, B L, E, and then we have our S, which is on the other side here. We're going to need two S's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do these partial because that way I can make sure that they will stay. So I apologize. My head's in the way. I just want to make sure I have this E over as far as I can get it. E-L-E-S-S. -S. -S. That way it'll fit in there. All right. So I'm going to pick those up. And again, when you pick it up, it does, you know, these photopolymer stamps are supposed to be very sticky. So if they are sticky where they're supposed to be, they're going to lift up the paper. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to ink up these first few letters. Okay, so we have B-L-E-S. Okay, move this over. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wipe this off. Wipe off these letters here. I need like a, a hanging thing here on my desk so I can hang my towels there. Because I have them on something slippery and they keep falling <laughs> And then we have B-L-E-S-S. -S. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit E-D. Yeah, probably not. B-L-E-S-S. -S. And we're going to squeeze it in there. E. And then where's my D? D. So you might want to do a little bit better planning than what I've done. What we could do is we could do these one at a time. And that way we made sure we have enough room. And I think I'm going to do that just for the sake of not making you suffer through this video again. Okay, so I'll pick up my S. And I'm just going to stamp the S. Got letters everywhere. B-L-E-S-S. -S. Let me see if I can pick up my E and my D at the same time. E. D. Eh, close enough. That's okay. For the sake of this, <laughs> want to have a little bit better planning if you're doing this yourself with deciding what you want to say before you put your letters on there. As I think I've probably said before, do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> as in every mom said that. All right, so there you go. So blessed Easter finally works out. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and take these off. I'm not sure again what size this is, so let me just take a peek and see. This is probably four. Oh, by gigantic, so this is going to be a little bit bigger. We'll see if we can trim off a little bit of that. Yeah, kind of lost a little bit of our L, but you get the gist there. So then what you can do is you can go ahead and mount this onto your card base. Of course, this card base is going to be a little bit different, but... What we can do is you can make this so it's a little bit longer and we'll go ahead and sponge the edge. Actually, instead, we'll do it with a marker. So we're gonna do this with our soft suede marker just to bring that soft suede back in. We'll go over the edges and that way it'll have a nice distinction with our Stampin' Right marker. 
and then we just pop this on to our card base the little fast fuse and another great one to be able to do actually with this if you have this stamp set and this um, also has a coordinating die if you wanted to another great way to do to be able to amp it up as does so the Christmas Pines has a set as does the Hold On To Hope so what you could do is you could cut some of these out with your big shot too as well and then you could, or you could cut out your cross and you could have one so it would be 3d so there's a very simple version of that card to do but again just another use for your christmas pines you could use that as an easter uh easter palms as well and if you don't have the hand lettered alphabet this is a really pretty alphabet you could certainly take much more time and make it so it was lined up a little bit better but i just wanted to share that technique with you so you can use all four sets all four sides of these plates to be able to stamp with and all you have to do is just clean them off in between. They clean right off. You can use a baby wipe if you have that left over. You could use a um, stamp chamois. So thanks guys for joining. And I'll be back with more tips on how to use this cool new tool, the Stamparatus, which will be available for purchase in the new 2018-2019 annual catalog. So that doesn't premiere until June. So if you do need a catalog, you can always send me your full mailing address, including your zip code. And I'd be happy to send you a catalog that is current right now. And then I'll add you to the list when the new one comes out. Thanks guys for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, you can hit me at ratesthestamper at gmail.com or follow me here on YouTube, on Facebook, or on Pinterest and Instagram at ratesthestamper.